I recognize it. Does anyone know the difference between the Swiss and the Germans? No. Though the Swiss are just like the Germans, they just lack a sense of humor. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. So, the Switzerland trip I took with the Weiss family included 11 of us, and then we picked up potentially a future son-in-law that was over in Lausanne for 12. So we were going all around Switzerland in three different cars of four people each. It was quite a trip. And we went in the last week to Zurich, New Schwanstein, Hohenschwangau Castle, Luzerne, Interlaken, Chateau de Chalon, Lausanne, and Bern. We spent a lot of time in the car driving around. We only had a couple car problems. We did have Team 2 get stuck in a tunnel. Uh, where they ended up needing a new car. Wow. So, and I was behind them and supposed to stop, but as I drove by and they were going like that, I didn't understand what that meant. <laughs> so we ended up where we were supposed to, and my wife was furious at me for leaving her stuck in a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> you can't please everybody. Sometimes anybody ever, but that's a different story. So, we started off in Luzerne. I'm so glad this is working. I spent most of today making sure this was going to work. This is a neat little statue over in Zurich. And so that's where we ended up flying into. It's where we left. And this statue doesn't mean a lot, but it was sort of nice. Here's a building over in Luzerne that I think you might like. Yes. And you can look at the beautiful architecture on this building. It almost looks like the type of extravagance that you'd see at a college campus that's charging way too much money for the product that it delivers, <laughs> sort of like Harvard, for example. It looks beautiful. You can see this is, uh, this is my daughter, Caitlin. This is Forrest. This is Jessica. This is Reagan. And this is the back of Kiefer's head. Wow. Shut up. Now, when you are in Zurich, of course, one of the first things you need to do is go into one of the shops and buy one of these knives. I will pass this around. We bought 11 knives on this trip <laughs> and only cut ourselves three times. <laughs> so try, if you have to see how sharp it is, go like this rather than that way. <laughs> <laughs> Now, another thing that Zurich has that's absolutely beautiful, we went in on a Sunday. And unlike here in America, where everything is open on a Sunday, we have like the 7-Eleven culture, over there, everything is closed on Sunday. They actually go to church. The only thing that is open is the church, a couple restaurants, and the zoo. So I went to the zoo. I guess they have to feed the animals on Sunday, too. And so they have admission so they can get the money to feed them. This is a beautiful enclosure. It looks almost like a shell. This is a huge elephant that looks tiny in this picture. And it's absolutely gorgeous on the inside, which you'll see on this next picture. Wow. That's what, I mean, isn't that gorgeous? This is about one-fifth of what's on the inside. And it's absolutely, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it's beautiful. So to remember this, I had to actually buy one of these. I mean, after all, elephants are big powerful and strong and smart, perfect as a mascot for the Republicans. <laughs> so let me go ahead and hand that around. Now, I didn't realize it, but my daughter wanted to see bats, and we went and tried to find the bats, and the bats weren't in the bat enclosure because they'd been moved over here. This is an inside aviary, and it's ginormous. It's about 300 yards from where we are here all the way to the back. Now, unfortunately, my camera had actually lost all of its power by this time, so this is a stock photo, but this is pretty much what we were looking at when we were up there. And as you rise, it's hot. So it is probably about 95 degrees up on top as you go up this big tree house to get up to this point. And then we saw all the bats, but it was pretty fun. Now this is Kiefer and my daughter Jessica, and this is one of the many bridges in Zurich that you just cross the river. It's a gorgeous river. You can see how old these buildings are. They're all four or five stories tall. 
And this is another chapel in the background, and that one we went inside. And what I discovered is that after the Reformation, they, the person who was in charge of the Reformation was a guy named uh, um, Ulrich uh, Zurich, I believe it was. And he didn't like how fancy all the chapels were. So he said that it distracted from the quality of the presentation. So they got rid of the stained glass, they got rid of the organs, they got rid of all of the fancy procedures, and they focused primarily on the word. And they put a nice podium in the middle, downsized the altar. I didn't know any of that stuff until I went there and found it out. It's pretty interesting. Now you guys might be more interested in chocolate. And this is one of the best places to buy. It's called Springley's. It has an N in it, but it's not really pronounced, so it's spr Sprigley's. And these are wonderful bonbons. My kids spent a lot of time there. Have a beautiful presentation because Easter's coming up on the outside. And this is about two feet tall. How is that for an Easter egg? Is that incredible? <laughs> that is one big piece of chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Now, when we were done doing this and going to the zoo, we went to the Hofbräu House. Now the Hofbräu House is German food. If you love German food, this is the place to go. They have lots of armor in the back. They have some, some spears that you can use to assault people if you really want to. And people usually start singing after the, it gets to about midnight. They all start singing. We didn't stay that long. But whenever you go, you have to go to the Hofbräu House. Now, this was just a label I saw up there. I don't know if any of you guys speak German, but it says support your local Antifa. That's the anti-fascist group. <laughs> We're against sexism, capitalism, racism, and homophobia. Beat up a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's what that says. <laughs> We're against violence. Beat up a Nazi. <laughs> yeah, but it's a cat, so how bad can it be? <laughs> All right, so we left there, and then we went to New Schwanstein. Now, New Schwanstein is up in Germany, so we had to drive up, drive up there. It's absolutely gorgeous. This was made by Ludwig, and he's got a second castle that's right down below. And they don't allow you to take any pictures on the inside. So all of my pictures are stock pictures that I took off the Internet just for full disclosure purposes. But everything that I'm showing is stuff that we actually saw. So this is how a king lives. This is the king's bed. All of this ornate uh, carving took like a thousand people like a year to carve. I mean, when you're the king, you get to have the entire kingdom making all of these ornate, beautiful wood carvings. And that's what he was known for. Now, this is just to prove we actually came here. Mm -hmm. So this is Jared and Jesse, my wife, Scowling, Laura. Reagan, uh, I can't see too well, Caitlin, Kiefer, Jessica, Forrest, and Mary. And that's, that's me, the big guy up there. <laughs> and we had to run all the way from the, about half a mile to get to this tour because we were running a little bit late. And my wife was having altitude sickness. And mm -hmm. so she decided to take a trip that only went halfway up with a bunch of horses. So she ended up having to wait in line 15 minutes, take the horse trip up only halfway, and then sprint the other halfway up. So she arrived a little bit sick for this event, which is why she's not totally her normal, happy self. I can tell you one thing about the Swiss. Everything starts exactly on time. And if you're not there standing in line ready for it, you don't get to go. And then you have to come back next week because they can't really schedule you for the next meeting because everybody else showed up on time. This is the throne room. Isn't this gorgeous? Look yeah. at all of that. That's beautiful. And this is a neat little model of the entire castle. The castles are the real fun things to watch on this trip. You get to see how you always dreamed about living. Now, this is the study. I'm not sure what they were studying in this study, but if you look real closely, you'll see that medieval porn was a big thing back then. <laughs> now, this is the second castle that's down, and this is the one I pronounced earlier, Hohengrau. I think it was Hohengrau. 
This one actually had more neat stuff to look at on the inside because they'd taken all the furniture out of New Schwan style. So you'll see lots of this. That's gold, and they don't allow you to touch it. The only stuff we were allowed to get real close to was the silver stuff, the gold they had behind a bunch of plate glass. But you can see how beautiful this is, and they still have it up for you to at least look at. And then this is the throne room down there because, you know, when he's tired of being 200 yards up the hill in his other throne room, he comes down here to a secondary throne room where he can impress everybody who wants to stay down here and not trudge up the hill. <laughs> and this is his bed chambers. Now, looking at his bed chambers, you would think he probably had about 25 kids. But in fact, Ludwig had zero kids and somebody else got to inherit the throne. So when we were done with that, we went to Ober, what, Ober, Ober Ammergau. Ober Ammergau, yes. Ober Ammergau is a neat place that's known for its carvings. Probably a lot of the people who carved everything that was in the castle were located down in Ober Ammergau. And this is an example of what they carved. I'll go ahead and pass this around. Please make sure to get it back. And that's part of a crush set. So they make these very ornate very beautiful hand-carved crush sets and then they paint them. It's, it's a neat thing to, to purchase over there and I think Kiefer ended up succumbing to that temptation and now has a, a new crush set. Crush. Crush. Alright, so when we were done with that, we went off to see what Switzerland is also known for. Beautiful Alps, gorgeous heights, beautiful views. And this was sort of neat. We went up to a place that had a gondola no one was there and in German it had some directions so we used Google Translate and said this is a self-serve gondola push the green button when you get to the top give us twenty dollars so we all climbed in put our lives in the hands of this gondola press the green button lo and behold it started going up the hill and we had this great time when we were up there so I got the rest of my family to join us so this is my wife this is me and I don't know if you guys remember, but I had a speech about having my own private mountain at one time. Yeah. That was my idea of being rich and having this, this beautiful palace at the top of a hill. That's there. This is your own private mountain. There's actually a guy who lives right there in a house. I don't know how he gets there. He must have his own gondola to get up because you can see it's surrounded by cliffs and all he has is this little area with some cows he has his own private farm, and he never sees anybody. Can you imagine him trying to go get the, the mail every day? I mean, that would really be a trial. Okay, so this is Forrest and my son, Reagan, and Mary. And look at that. Isn't that gorgeous in the background? And this isn't even winter. So then we went from there to this little town that was in the area, and it had cows, little farm, and this was a ski town, there's no snow there, so what do they do at this time of year? They get all of the cows to give them fresh milk and they make cheese. And this is a sundial, they just bent it a little bit, it doesn't really work for daylight savings time, but it's pretty close. And here's the guy making cheese. Now, do you guys remember curds and whey from those nursery rhymes? That's actually a byproduct of making cheese. And I never knew that. So that is whey, and what's, what happens is they make the cheese. We, this was like a cheese factory. This was called the cheese factory, and it's only like 30 feet around. <laughs> and we were looking for the factory. We didn't know where the factory was. We kept walking around saying, this couldn't be it. This couldn't be the cheese factory. They make 1,600 of these pieces of cheese every day in this one facility and they have like five different stations and it goes around and they press all of the curds together to make the cheese and they put them into brine and we got to make our own sample right here and then take some of the cheese with us. It was really a fun time. And this guy was so excited to give us a tour. He, he, was, he spoke perfect English and he got paid of course to give us the tour and to do this but he was really excited about it. The first guy who really was super excited about us on the trip. <laughs> now I gotta show this to you. This is funny. Oh, a video? Oh good.
Now look at that. Have you ever seen something like that before? <laughs> they actually have the toilet bowl circling around and cleaning it when you're done. I've never even seen Swiss manufacturing before, but now I'm impressed. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the cheese that we just ate. <laughs> now, when we left there, we went to St. Bert's Cavern. And this is a big cave that they have in the middle of the mountain with all of this water coming up. This is St. Bert in there. He looks a little bit old and waxen, but that's the way he looked back 200 years ago. And this is what it looks like on the outside. I mean, look at how gorgeous this is. This is water coming out of a little cave up there. And there's a restaurant on top. And then you have this walkway that <coughs> circles back and forth up the mountain. And there's my daughter and Kiefer, those little midgets there. And this is this reminds me of Minas Turif, if you guys ever read The Hobbit and ever read the books, The, the Lord of the Rings. They had something designed exactly like this. So that's us inside, and this was the hat I wore inside because it was a little bit cold. <coughs> oh, and I forgot to send these around. When we were at New Schwanstein, of course I had to buy some of these, so let me go ahead and pass those around. Please make sure all of these come back because these are really you know, fabulous. I love these. And here's even a little book about how beautiful that was. And then this is Jesse and my son. And all the water goes down through these limestone caves and carves them out. And then you have people who come in with, have little ferns and plants on them, and so the plants start growing. Pretty cool. Now, when we left there, I did something I have never done before, which was really awesome. And I think you're going to like this. This works. Correctly. You don't look too happy about it. <laughs> Paragliding and interlocking. Have any of you guys done this before? Okay, well, you're going to be impressed at this. I strap myself onto this strange contraption, and I basically go running down a hill with this guy who hopefully is an expert, who's going to keep me alive. There I go. There I go. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. Keep running even when you're air. Keep running, run, 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 run. And now I'm actually in the air with this guy. I've got my camera, my GoPro, that I'm sitting here and aiming up at myself to watch this. Now this movie is about two and a half minutes long. And this is what it looks like as you're, see, this is my little shadow there. You have the beautiful Alps in the background. Now, I've never done this before. This is the first time I've ever done this. To get all prepared for this, they have like a little tether that you put the camera on, because I guess a lot of other people have dropped their cameras in the past, yeah. never been able to find them. This guy that I'm with is an expert, thank goodness. And what they do is there's like a big thermocline that comes in right at this ridge. So the wind comes in and starts rising right at this ridge. So you see all of these other people are going in circles around this ridge, which makes it even more exciting not to run into the other people. Because oh, yeah. that could cause a real problem. Oh, yeah. This is sort of like a parachute, but it can deflate, unlike other parachutes. Yeah. So you have to actually make sure that you don't do anything dumb with it, unless you have an expert like this guy who's going to do some really dumb stuff with it. And I'm going to be laughing my head off here soon. See now, see, see how everything is going back and forth? <laughs> now there's about three G's worth of, of uh, force being exerted on my brain right now. So if I'm not laughing like this, I probably would have gone unconscious because you're forcing blood back up into your brain as he's zipping around like this. And he was really impressed that I didn't lose my lunch. A lot of the guys who go up there don't last as long as I did. So now we're coming in for a landing. I was up there for 40 minutes. Wow. Really? Wow. I, I paid for the double time. Now we're coming in, coming in. We're going to have to start running when we hit the ground. And he does a nice little flare, so it's actually not too bad. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
fish fly. And that's wow. good. And then you chuck it back up. When you release it. Yeah, that was 4,400 feet in the air that wow. they started. Oops. Next, next slide. All right, so we left there and we went to the Chateau de Chalon. You can see all the rest of my kits there. This is their dungeon. For all those who think about Dungeons and Dragons, this is a real dungeon. They kept prisoners back there until they got rescued. There's one guy who was there 10 years and got rescued. This is a picture down from the keep. And so you can see how tall it is. You put some, this has been around for probably a thousand years. So they started off with uh, bows and arrows and then they had crossbows and then eventually they had firearms and so they would put all of their their equipment up here at the top so it could fire down. And then this is over in Lausanne. And this is gorgeous. It looks like Notre Dame. It's another cathedral. You can see how beautiful this artwork is all up and down. That's the inside. Now they allowed us to take pictures of the inside of this church. A lot of the other churches they didn't. So we, this is the museum, the Natural History Museum. When we first came here, there was a couple people dancing right here in the center, doing ballroom dancing for no good reason. I, I love going around and just seeing neat stuff like that. This is not quite so neat. This is a two-headed animal. And they have some other, quote, monsters that they have at this museum. I knew you guys would be interested in this stuff. I was fascinated. And here's uh, some more. So they had some genetic mutations in this museum that they like to showcase. When we left there, this was a marketplace that was outside. And this is, I've got to show you this. We met this guy at the bottom of a cellar. He was a biker, and he makes these. And I just couldn't resist because it's made out of elk horn and I've never seen the, what they did with the blade. So it's sort of neat to go from the church experience to the bottom of this cellar with a biker who advertised that he made this stuff from hell. So it's quite a differential dichotomy, quite a sojourn. And here is our last one, last slide here. When we finished up there, we went to Burn. They actually had an Oompa Pa band of Burn. See if I can get the volume on this. It was almost like they knew we were coming. And this was just a free concert. We actually had another church right in back of us. We got there and they, they actually, one of the things that we noticed is that a lot of American songs were being played, both on the radio and by the Germans in their band. So it was pretty interesting to be realize just how much of a culture has been adopted by the Europeans that comes from, from America. And so that is the end of 